Fever Dreams, now available for play on your NES. Well hello there, I'm Roger the Retro Gaming Puppet and this is Obscure Old Games. It's also part two of the Mega Maniversary, and for my part on this show we'll be talking about two games that are tangentially related to the Mega Man series but are not actually Mega Man games, and one Mega Man game proper. This month it's one of the former, a bizarre little gem for the Famicom. Mega Man immediately inspired a lot of imitators, but some of these imitators have more ties to the Blue Bomber than you might initially think. See, while Keiji and Afune stayed at Capcom for a very long time, not everyone did. And one of the minds behind the first two Mega Man games, Akira Kitamura, left Capcom right around the time Mega Man 3 was starting development. He left to form his own company with other Capcom expats in 1991. That company was called Takeru. And it was Kitamura and Takeru who developed the game we're talking about today, Kokoron. Released in 1991, Kokoron sees a blue taper named Taper asking the player to follow him into the world of dreams to rescue a princess named Rua and a fairy named Kokoron. The taper says that there will be endless adventure in the realm of dreams, so you follow him. Because that's totally normal, right? Kokoron says it was developed by K2, but from what I can parse, that just seems to be the name of Kitamura's specific team within Takeru. As with many defunct Japanese publishers and developers of this era, the history is hard to nail down. But at any rate, this game really takes the dream thing to heart. The player can create their own dream warrior with a variety of heads, bodies, and weapons. You want to be a skull on a boat that shoots baseballs? You want to be a jack-o'-lantern on a spring that fires music notes? Or maybe you just want to be a bird with a human head that throws ninja stars. The way this building mechanic works is that each part helps determine your movement speed, jump height, and life bar, so choose carefully. If you're fast, you'll be susceptible to attack, but beefing up your health will make you slow and low. Fortunately, and this is where the Mega Man part really comes in, when you beat each of the initial five stages, which you can choose in any order, of course, you get to build a new Nightmare Child. Maybe this time, it'll be a Xenomorph head on a soldier's body that throws explosive flower seeds. The stage progressions deserve a shout out here as well. The stages can, as I said, be taken in any order. But the interesting thing here is that they're all connected, so when you go from one to another, you have to find your way out of the stage whose boss you just beat and the layouts change based on which stage you're going from and to, so there's a fair amount of replay value here. Plus, some of these stages are very cool on their own, like this forest, which is my personal favorite. Although, the Milk Sea with the pirate ship is pretty interesting too. And going from one to another, especially when they're desperately themed, really adds to the dreamlike quality of the game. But, well, I do have to be fair, and there are some things that stop this game from being Mega Man levels of quality. Takeru wasn't the cash cow that Capcom was, and it's pretty evident here. The game is pretty short, and some of the stages don't have the quality that the forest I like does. In fact, some of the backgrounds in these levels are very sparse. Compare this with the NES games of the same year, stuff like Vice Project Doom, just as a random for example, and it's a bit of a shock, ain't it? The other thing is that this game is easy up until the final stages. See, after you defeat the initial stages, you find out, spoilers ahead, that the Taper is actually a monster that lives on the dreams of children. So yeah, you have to defeat him before he 
eats your dreams or whatever. I, I don't know. This game is a total acid trip, and I didn't play the translated version, so I really got no idea what's actually going on here. Point is, the stages at the end, when you're pursuing Taper, are actually pretty tough. But I barely lost a life before that, and I didn't see the continue screen at all until those final stages. The bosses aren't very tough either. Most of them go down with pretty little effort, even though they can be pretty interesting as boss encounters. There's this playing card one, and this moon, he's not very tough, but he's cool looking. The last and honestly biggest problem I have with this game are the eggs. Yeah. So every power-up comes from an egg. When you kill enemies, they drop these pink speckled eggs, and you have to shoot them several times to crack them open and get the power-ups. And it absolutely kills the pacing of the game to have to stop constantly and shoot a bunch of eggs. But but you gotta, see? Because cause your shop power-ups are in those, not to mention any health you might collect. And, and these shop power-ups are a must. Now fortunately, they're permanent, so once you've gotten one character fully powered, which takes about a stage and a half, you don't have to worry anymore for that particular nightmare baby. Even if you die, or continue. Interestingly, this game had a planned port to the PC Engine, or Japanese Turbo Graphics, called PC Kokoron, and a sequel for the Sega CD called Poppin' Land, neither of which saw the light of day. They were both slated for 1994 releases, which is, unfortunately, the year Takeru went belly up. It's really too bad, too, because both of these look like they had a lot of potential. When all said and done, Kokoron is a fun, if not flawed, game. It remained in Japan, probably because the Super NES had already been released by the time it debuted, but it has found an audience here, and there is a translation patch, as I said, so if you've already played the NES Mega Man games to death, I say give this one a spin. And that does it. I'm Roger the Retro Gaming Puppet, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time, right here on Obscure Old Games for more Mega Maniversary.